Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to part five of building a wireless sensor network with Arduino and the NRF24L01 transceiver modules. I'm super excited for this part because we get to look at the boards that we built up in part four. I have them, I built a couple up, and we'll also look at the code for the temperature sensors. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, check out my store at forstronics.com, and let's get started. Here are three boards that I built up. Here's kind of a zoom in close up. Let me stop it there. So 98% or 99% of the board is correct. There is a couple of mistakes that I want to fix. And I, by the time you watch this video I'm on GitHub, I'll have the updated Eagle files with these corrections that I'm about to mention. But I'm actually showing the board with the TMP36. But for the DS1820, which is actually the S20, I need to relabel this for the DS18S20. I also forgot to put in the resistor. So you have to use this with a 4.7 kilo ohm uh, resistor on the data line, even if you're not using it in parasitic power mode. And, and you may not be too familiar with this, but anyway, I forgot that. So this doesn't work. Now I do have a, a unit down there where I put in the resistor. I basically squeezed it in to these holes, but I wanna put a slot in there for the resistor. So that is probably the biggest thing I overlooked. I need to do a couple minor things, like I didn't put a, a dot for the uh, the small. This is the uh, ST, uh, STTS 751 temperature sensor. And I didn't put a dot to show where the first pin or the yeah pin one is. So I accidentally actually put one of these on backwards on one of the boards. So I pretty much ruined it. Uh, I need to, I messed up a little bit on the labeling here. So a couple minor mistakes. I'm going to update it, put the board up there. So by the time you watch this, it'll be all up there. So hopefully you're familiar with this because we looked at it in part four. But of course, here's the NRF24. Here is the Arduino chip. Remember, we're not. this is not an Uno board. This is a Pro Mini. We're running the Pro Mini bootloader. Why? Because we're running it at a lower voltage. We want to run it down below three volts. We're gonna have an eight megahertz resonator. So that's right here. This is our reset button. These connectors here are for serial programming. So if you have a FTDI board, you can program it from here. I put the bootloader on the, board, the chip before I put it on here. You can still add the bootloader if you wanted to using these connections, but I don't have an ISCP header, which is fine. This, this button here is the mode select button. So once the board starts up, if I press this, it pulls pin eight low. And if you remember the code, that's gonna cause it to go into its setting modes where I can set the node number, where I can uh, set the, um, what else? The internal reference voltage, whether it's a router or an end device, things like that. I put jumpers here. So all this is kind of flexible. So all these pins, for the spy, spy communication and the control of the NRF24, I put jumpers here so you can still access them. For the STTS751, I put jumpers here. You know, here's, uh, here's my jumper for the power select. So we have an LM317 linear voltage regu regulator. So if this is, let's say, a router or, it's, or you want to use it for testing, like you're just getting it started up, you don't want to waste your battery power, you can use that input or you change this jumper and you can use here for the for input battery here i put some prototyping area and then here i use this as sort of a pseudo breadboard which is i have this on some of my nrf24 shields and i really like it so i can take components out and put them back in without having to solder if i use these pins i do have to solder these are all shorted together if you remember the uh, eagle file so you can use it like a breadboard I push the button here, I push the button there. You can see they're pretty small. You can see the size compared to my hand for a surface mount, or not surface mount, excuse me, through hole components. Let me get through this one. You can see the back. Let me point something out right here. Of course, I left the ground plane. So this is underneath the NRF24. And what I did was I cut out the ground plane because we don't want that blocking our antenna. So I took out the ground plane there, so we get good reception. 
Here's one where I can actually connected the battery. So I actually don't have my solderless breadboard here. I got lazy and didn't put it on this one yet. But I, I added a battery. I soldered connectors. Remember, we can use two triple A's. We can use two double A's. Or you could even use um, some lithium ion or lithium polymer options that I discussed. Once again, if you're using the battery straight in, there's no DC to DC converter. There's no regulator. So we need to keep it within you know that 3.6 to depending on the the sensor you're using down to 2.5 2.25 actually is the lowest for this sensor right here and remember that's one of the reasons that's one of the nice things about this board is the sensor flexibility so here i have the stts 751 this sensor could go down to 2.25 volts so you get a wide range from the battery but you also have the slot for the DS18S20, and you can also use the TMP36 here. You just put it in backwards. I might actually add a better label to say that you can put the TMP36. And what's nice is I tried this out with both the STTS751 as well as the DS18S20. Both those sensors, and I also did my calibration for the internal voltage reference. Remember, we can add the calibration factor. And both of those gave me very accurate temperature measurements. They both agreed very much. And I have a, uh, a DMM where I can do different temperature measurements and they agreed with that. So great accuracy these sensors give on the, the temperature measurements. Let me finish this off. I think that's about it. I'm going to show the third one. So, oh, let me show this real quick. So here is where I added the extra resistor. So I have the TS18S20 and I put in the resistor that's missing. So I kind of just stuck it in here, but I'm gonna add the resistor position for the updated Eagle files. And so my plan is I'm, I'm gonna do some further testing on these. I did some initial testing. Everything seems to be working. If, if something drastic happens, I'll, I'll let you know. But for the most part, I'm just gonna do those corrections. I'm gonna post this board. I'm gonna post the code. And I'm actually going to do a part six. And here's what I'm going to do for part six. I'm actually going to change most of the components to surface mount. So I'm going to make the board even smaller. And I'll offer the surface mount version uh, for sale on my website. This basic version, or I shouldn't say basic version, this through-hole version, you know, you can grab the Eagle files from my website and make it yourself. But I'll, I'll offer a, um, a surface mount version. So And it'll get even smaller. So I'll show that in part six. Okay, let's take a look at the code. So remember, we have the three sensors, which I mentioned that we support. The TMP36, which is the analog temperature sensor, the DS18S20, which gives very high accuracy, but the only problem is it only goes down to three volts. So if we're using, so if we're using a battery and, and we wanna have a large range, now I know some people suggested some of the lithium polymer, that'll work well with this DS18S20. But if you want a, a larger voltage range to work with, the STTS751 will work. And once again, these both give great accuracy. The DS18S20 gives a little bit better, uh, but my initial testing gives, they, they both are pretty accurate. Okay, let's look at the code. So here is, what I did is I just made a sketch for each of the temperature sensors. Now I thought about, well, I can add the temperature sensor selection to the menu, but the settings menu is already getting kind of big. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to put uh, the name for the temperature sensor in the version of the code, and I'll have all three versions, the TMP36, the DS version, the STTS version, all on GitHub. So you can grab whichever one you're interested in using. If you notice, these are the libraries I had to add for the DS18S20. That, so we're looking at the DS18S20 code version. This one wire library is the communication protocol they use. And then this Dallas temperature, which is the company that, that made it originally. I think that company is now bought by, uh, I think it's Maxim. Maxim actually owns them. So this DS, this Dallas temperature library is sort of a wrapper for the one wire library. The one wire library gets down to the, you know, the bytes. This just sort of makes it a little readable. I, I almost just use the one wire library, but I figured what the heck, I'll use them both and make it easy. So if I go down to here, so what I did here was I start the libraries or I initialize the, um, I make an instance of the library. I then start them up. I then set my resolution. 
I set my resolution to only nine bits because it takes a lot more time if you do 12 bits. I think it takes 700 milliseconds. So I didn't want the measurement to take that long. So I do nine bits. I do my temperature measurement and then I return it. And here I actually added a function as well for converting it to Fahrenheit. If you're just looking at Celsius, you don't need that. And then let's look at the code for the STTS. For this one, you're going to need the wire.h because it uses a version of I squared C. But let me go down to the function. Here it is. So once again, just like the other one, I do a wire.begin. And I should mention, I leveraged some of this code from uh, Mike Sanbi. I don't know how to say his name, but here's a link to his blog. He, he gave an overview of, of the, uh, the temperature sensor along with other stuff at, the, at his blog. So you, you have to grab it bite by bite. And one thing that I had a little trouble with is you have to address it right. And it doesn't say in the data sheet exactly what its address was. It basically has a way to choose addresses based on what value resistor you tie to its address pin. And I had it tied to ground, and they say in the data sheet that it should be then 76 hex, which it's not. And I found, luckily, on a website, someone mentioned that, no, it's the same thing that's tied to 33 kilo ohms. So anyway, long story short, this is the address you want to use. I'm actually going to do a separate blog post on this temperature sensor because it it's actually a nice temperature sensor, but it's a little tough to use, and I'll talk about it more in a, in a future post. Okay, so I'm not going to show the code for the TMP36 because it's pretty much what you've seen in past versions. As, as I mentioned, the code in the Eagle files will be on GitHub. I mentioned that I'm going to be working on another version that's going to be mainly surface mount that I'll offer on Forgetronics.com. And one thing I'll mention is this this was a long series. We went through a lot. We basically took a design from the beginning to, to an end here and you could even say it's not the end because there's not a case for it. If you want to make a case or if you want to mount the battery or the or the device somewhere, I have still have to do that. So if anybody does anything like that, please share, share it with me. But I didn't do anything for the coordinator. I did basic code for the coordinator that just basically shows the temperature. And the coordinator is actually, you know, its own beast. And I've had a lot of people suggest what, you know, what you should do with the coordinator. And I'll just mention that, you know, this, this project is meant to be flexible. The whole idea of this design was to be flexible and supposed to meet the needs of various people's target application. I think the coordinator is a similar story. You know, people said, you know, they want to see it on their phone. They want to see it on a display. Someone mentioned that, that it should have a real-time clock so you know the times that the temperatures are coming in, which, which I agree for the most part. But depending on exactly what your ad application is depends on how you want the coordinator to go. So I may do a separate series on the coordinator. I'm going to work on this a little bit more to set up my personal temperature sensor network, what I was planning to do, and then maybe from there I'll, I'll, I'll share what I did for the coordinator. If anybody else does anything with the coordinator, please let me know. And throughout this project, I appreciate all the tips and input people have given. And stay tuned for part six. Thank you for watching.